Hi, this is Shira Rubinoff. I'm here with Insights in Tech. I'm here with Sylvia Acevedo, CEO of Girl Scouts USA. Sylvia, thank you for being here. Such a pleasure to have you on the show. Oh my goodness, it's really my honor. Thank you. Thank you. So Sylvia, you have an extremely impressive background. Can you please share a few of your highlights uh, with our audience? Well, thank you very much. You know, I have really been, um, I've been able to live a life of my dreams and live my potential. So, you know, when I was in Girl Scouts as a young girl, I earned my science badge making rockets. And so that got me really interested in how do you break gravity's pull, right? Uh, because it took me like over six attempts to finally get my rocket to leave Earth. So I was so grateful that that experience happened early in my life because then I began to take science and math and that prepared me so that I could take engineering and my first job out of college was as a rocket scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Labs and I worked on two missions the Voyager 2 mission that did a flyby of Jupiter and its moons Io and Europa and I did a lot of data analysis of all the information coming back um, and this is this was really fantastic and then the other one was the solar polar solar probe renamed Parker Solar Probe, so for the space nuts out there, that recently launched. Uh, after that, I went to Stanford and got my master's degree um, in engineering, and then I had a great career in technology um, prior to coming and becoming the CEO of Girl Scouts. Wonderful. So Sylvia, Girl Scouts has been an expert in fostering leadership in girls for over 100 years. One of the most recent accomplishments have been taking ownership of the STEM space for girls and helping drive the female workforce in this very important sector. I will share with our audience just a few of the wonderful statistics. So to meet the girls' interest in STEM, the Girl Scout organization added 54 new STEM badges since 2014, now offering 70 STEM badges, as well as since Girl Scouts started offering new cybersecurity badges in July 2018, girls have over earned over 100,000 cybersecurity badges. So I'd like to talk about the cybersecurity initiative for a bit here, as this is a very big push around uh, the world, really, and really embracing cybersecurity. So Sylvia, what prompted the Girl Scouts to offer this cybersecurity badge? Actually, quick answer, the girls themselves. So we were, as you mentioned, uh, producing more STEM badges in our past three years than we ever had in any like-minded time in Girl Scouts. What happened though is we were doing our focus groups when we were testing the badges we'd ask the girls what next and they would always talk about security. They'd say you know I really care about my personal safety, I care about the information on the devices and you know they didn't always use the word cybersecurity, but they kept talking about security and safety so th with that knowledge we went and got a couple partners uh, palo alto networks as well as raytheon and they've really sponsored our work and i will say it was a hit the girls have loved the cybersecurity, and what i love best is once they learn something like password protection, network, malware, et cetera, they take that knowledge and then they try to improve the lives of others, whether it's their grandparents, whether it's at a senior center, whether it's their own family network. Um, I know when girls have been taking or have just completed a badge, because sometimes I'll get social media messages from parents who say, oh my gosh, my daughter came home and asked us, what was our Wi-Fi pa password protocol? And I didn't even know what she was talking about. Amazing. Well, do you think based on the success of this cybersecurity badge that you'll be offering something to just further extend the cybersecurity knowledge of these girls? You know, absolutely. So we start at age five and go all the way till they're 18. So um, we have pro we have progressive badges. So they are learning about how to protect their information and knowledge. And as they get older, it becomes even, you know, getting into hacking and how to prevent hacking when you're in uh, the older badges. But what I really love is that it opens their eyes to how ubiquitous um, people can be to try to get your personal information without you knowing about it. And what I like to say is they, no one put an S in the IOTP. So then the Internet of Things protocol S, the security and safety was left out. So I girls are really letting us know that that is so important. That needs to be put back in. And when they think about it, it's things like, you know, how do I protect the information so that people don't know, you know, where I am when I don't want them to know, you know, your, your location. Um, the other thing is, you know, we teach 
seven and eight year old girls about malware. And you think, how do you teach seven and eight year old girls about malware and you know physical networks? Well, the approach we take and the reason we've been so successful, you know, you mentioned right now the number now is over 150,000 cyber yeah. bags earned in rural, urban, and suburban communities. It's because we recreate the programming around what girls are interested in. And a, a great example is how do you teach malware and, and physical networking? Well, you know, standard people talk about the seven layers of, of uh, physical networking and the first layer is the physical network. And at that point, the seven and eight year old girl is like, I'm out of here, I'm bored. But what we do instead is we get girls to sit in a circle and start talking with each other. Turns out they kind of like to do that. Yeah. Then we give them a ball of yarn and then they pass the yarn to one another as they talk to one another. Pretty soon a physical network is created. So they instantly get what a physical network is. And then we designate that one of the girls has malware and they can then see immediately how everybody else got infected with that malware. So in a very quick way, you can teach in a way that's relevant to girls the concept. So suddenly they learn about malware, they learn about physical networks, they learn about cybersecurity, and it's no longer scary to them. So what we have found that has worked so well with Girl Scouts to really you know, bridge the STEM gap is, one, you have to get them interested because if a girl isn't interested, she's not gonna get to the next stage, right? Which is she's not gonna be confident. But if she's interested and then she's confident, then she can become competent. And we know that when we get girls to do those things, they will feel so much more confident in their ability to pursue different degrees. And like, for example, like me, becoming a rocket scientist and an engineer. Wow, that's, that's super impressive. And I couldn't agree more, you know, getting to their core of what's important to them and making it a real world tangible idea for them to really embrace it. So that's very exciting. And I certainly look forward to hearing more about what those badges as they continue coming through the pikes from you. And as we all know, the world has changed dramatically since being impacted by COVID-19. Can you please share with us how this impacted the Girl Scouts and what you've done to pivot in this trying time to deal with these challenges? Well, thank you. You know, it really has been incredibly challenging for, for all of us, and Girl Scouts are no different. We saw the early warnings was what was happening around the world. And also in Seattle, since that was one of the early sites in the United States, our Girl Scout Council there alerted us to how quickly this spread and what an impact it has on Girl Scouts. So we immediately began to make plans to go remote, fully remote. And then we realized, you know, um, our cookie program is mostly from January to March. So we were going to lose one third of our cookie program. Now, for those of people out there who don't know the philanthropic world, it turns out girls and women's causes gets less than 9% of every philanthropic dollar, right? So the cookie program is instrumental to fund the local activities for Girl Scouts. So to lose one third of that revenue, it's really challenging. So we knew we'd have to do something and provide a virtual online store and a great marketing campaign. Simultaneously, we knew since girls would be sheltering in place and they couldn't have the troop meetings, we knew we had to put our programming virtual online. At this, during the same 10 day period, it was amazing. We had this massive effort. Everyone came together, our local councils, our partners, our, the staff, and on one side, we created an online store with a great marketing campaign, the Girl Scout Cookie Care, so that people could continue to order Girl Scout cookies uh, for themselves or as a thank you to first responders and healthcare workers. And I will tell you some of the most touching stories I have gotten are from those folks who have received those Girl Scout cookies. Because the Girl Scout cookies are iconic, they're emblematic, and when somebody gets them after a a long day or even just shows up at work or is at a truck stop in New Mexico or Ohio, that trucker, that first line worker, that healthcare worker says, somebody knows me, notices me, somebody realizes I'm making a sacrifice, somebody knows I'm putting my life on the line for others and is appreciative and is grateful and it just makes them feel great. Some of the stories I've gotten from that are fantastic. And at the same time, we had a parallel effort of putting it was just a Herculean task to put our virtual programs online so that girls could still be gaining skills. And we, we made a big effort to make sure our programs didn't feel like school, that it was still fun, 
and engaging. So our first efforts, I have to tell you, it was massive. It was a whirlwind, 100 out plus hour work weeks. But I'm so grateful because Girl Scouts stayed relevant. It gave girls something to do. It was engaging. And I'll tell you, even cybersecurity, when you think about everyone now working virtually at home, we thought, boy, our badges are going to really drop off. We saw our cyber security badges only drop off by 20%. So instead of getting 10,000 badges a month, the girls were earning 8,000. I frankly thought it would be down to 1,000. So wow, what, what a, it tells us that the programming is what girls want. That is wonderful. Well, kudos to you. And I'd like to end this by giving you the opportunity to speak to our community about how they can help support the Girl Scouts. What could we all do to show our support to you, to help maybe get involved? Some larger companies might want to get involved in some of the cybersecurity efforts or even some other STEM efforts. What can they do to help? Thank you for that question. So Girl Scouts is the largest national effort to give girls the STEM skills they need at scale with amazing outcomes. So if you're interested in the workforce that has those skills, please come support Girl Scouts, either locally in your community, because everyone, whether it's your local bank, your local school, your city, they're going to need those 21st century uh, STEM skills. And Girl Scouts is focused on providing that, but clearly at the national level as well. So one, I would encourage you to, if your company cares about the workforce of tomorrow, today, come work with Girl Scouts. The other one is, say you're a Girl Scout alum. I'm going to ask you to reach out. We have a Girl Scout network on LinkedIn. Come back, connect with us. Uh, We'd love that. And we're always looking for volunteers as well to support um, our local efforts so that girls can have that, you know, STEM or cyber support locally. You know, they get it. They get how important it is. All of them have a mobile device in their hand. So they are all working with that. And now what they want to know is, you know, what other skills they can learn. And I want to leave you with one of the most impactful stories of a girl who had learned some STEM skills. She was in the agricultural area of California. And I said, well, now that you've you know, learned cybersecurity, what are you going to do? And she looked at me and she said, well, my project is going to be what happens when the Internet of Things is hacked and all of our tractors and combines, which are controlled by the Internet of Things, they don't even have steering wheels anymore, right. are stuck in the fields. What happens to the sustainability of our food supply? I was really impressed with that because I thought, this is so great. You know, she's doing the courage, the confidence, and the character, and then also the take action. We ask girls to make the world a better place. So she's translated that cyber skill and reflected, how can I make the world a better place? What happens when our internet of things gets hacked? And how do we make sure people still get fed? I love that example. That is wonderful. Well, Sylvia, thank you so much for your time. And thank you for all you do. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Sure. Thank you very much for what you do as well. I very much appreciate it.